if I had been elected president under the same circumstances so that, you know, I lost the popular vote, I squeaked through the Electoral College, and evidence came up that the Russians, for whatever reason, were trying to help me, I would have said on the first day in office, we're going to launch the most thorough investigation. No nation, particularly an adversary nation, can mess with our democracy. I would have had an independent commission. I would have done everything I could to get to the bottom of it because it's not going to stop. This is a different kind of theft. Do you think this is bigger than Watergate? I think it's probably uh, bigger than Watergate because it is about the future. We no longer are worried about you know, spies and provocateurs with, you know, dressed in black with gloves breaking into a, uh, a, an office and stealing information. They do it sitting in the offices of the Russian, you know, military intelligence and other related uh, venues, and they get into what is the core of our life now through uh, the computers. When, when Comey said that he was reopening the investigation, you believe that is the day that effectively your campaign was over? I believe based on a lot of evidence and a lot of assessments by other good analysts, yes, that was the determinative day because it stopped my momentum. I think it's important to focus on what happened because lessons can be learned. But the more important lessons that will affect our democracy going forward are not about him and his investigation. He, I think, forever changed history, but that's in the past. What's important is the fact that the Russians are still going at us. In the book, um, you make no attempt to hide your displeasure about the Electoral College. You say on page 386, you say the godforsaken Electoral <laughs> College. Uh, do you think the Electoral College should be abolished? I said that in 2000, after what happened to uh, the 2000 election with Al Gore. We've moved toward one person, one vote. That's how we select winners. I was amused after the French elections when I was listening to an interview with a French electoral expert and he said, well, unlike your country, the person who wins the most votes wins. So I think it needs to be uh, eliminated. I'd like to see us move beyond it, yes. You also have a lot of people uh, since then, since Inauguration Day in the last eight months, coming up to you, women coming up to you with their daughters and saying, uh, my daughter didn't go out to vote, and sort of wanting absolution from her. Right. Well, that happened to me. What's more common are people bursting into tears. Do you give absolution to, to those who didn't vote? I don't. I, look, I, I, when it first started happening, it was so soon after the election, and the election was so bizarre and close. It was hard for me to you know, comfort somebody who was coming to me and saying, oh, I wish I'd done more, or I'm sorry I didn't vote, uh, because I think this was one of the most consequential elections that, you know, we have faced in a long time. You know, I just hope people will take what happened this time seriously and be ready and willing to vote the next time.